Hey guys, it's Chris. Today I'm going to talk to you about the iService collection add options and how you can use that in your application to read the app settings.json, take the data out and use it like you would with any other data from a class. So I hope you like this content. We'll jump right into the code. I'm um, just real quick. If you do like it at the end, please go ahead and click that alarm bell down below and subscribe for me. I do appreciate your support and I hope you enjoy it. We'll see ya. All right, let's create a new project. I'm going to do this project uh, in MVC for core, but you could really do um, almost anything you want um, and get the same result and still have you know, some value out of this as long as you pick a .NET project. Um, let's just go ahead and pick a .NET Core web application. Next. That looks good to me. And we're going to do MVC. But like I said, you could pick one of these other web applications um, and you could still do this create all right so the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and put some information in your app settings uh, so i will warn you um, going multiple levels out it doesn't really like that and i looked in the microsoft documentation it literally said separation of concerns like they don't want you to do that so we're just going to keep it at like the two levels for now um, so why don't we create you a custom one that says my my settings curly braces and let's do my uh, how about ABC and it has the value of hello world I know you developers don't get sick of hearing hello world, right? In tutorials. <laughs> and let's do DEF and we'll give it the, uh, we don't want to say goodbye world. That sounds horrible, right? And oh, I remember this time I zoomed in. You're welcome. So let's say hello again. I zoomed in. Yay. All right. <laughs> so moving on. Now we're going to go to startup.cs and in here we're going to register a service. So scroll down here to add services.add controllers with views. And right under that you can do services.add options. And um, just I'm going to put a comment here to tell you what this really is, which is iOptions key. If you hover over it, it'll show you that it's iService collection add options. All right. Okay, so just above that, and you may have other things in here, so it's just remember it's going to be at the top of your configure services method. You can add another one, which is going to be services.configure. Configure. And in here, you're going to put the name of your class, which I know we haven't created this class yet, but we're going to be creating a class called My App Settings. And we'll do configuration dot get setting section. <laughs> you can just reuse this here again. So my app settings dot and remember this one here, section name. I just pasted that in there for you. Section name. Now it's all underlined in red because we haven't created it yet, but we'll do that next. Now let's go ahead and build a class. All right, so I like to create uh, another folder here. I open the folders up so you can see them, but I usually like to add a folder called services in .NET Core or .NET 5. You know, people usually separate out this, the interfaces from the concrete services into two separate folders within that. So you could do like add transient in your startup.cs and re register a bunch of custom services that you could then inject into the controllers uh, and into other services, etc. Um, but um, in this case, since we don't have to build an interface for it, we're just building a, a class. I'm just going to just use a services folder without the two subfolders. So let's go ahead and create the class and my app settings. Very nice. All right. 
So now within this, in here, we're going to do public const string section name equal to, and here we're going to pop into that app settings JSON and get the name of that header right there. Just like that. I copied that and we'll go back to our new class here and I'm going to put it right in here. Now we can grab anything that's underneath that level and we'll put them in here as properties. All right. So let's just remember what they were again. So ABC and DEF, and they're both strings, but I'd like to use something that's another type, say an integer or something, X, Y, Z, 995. Okay. Don't ask me where that number came from. It just popped in my head. All right. So now we can do a uh, public string and it's a property. So public string, ABC, get set. I'll do the easy way. Prop tab tab string tab def. <laughs> uh, let's do it again. Prop tab tab int tab x y z. Uh, it's off the screen. All right. So now we want to use this. Um, I'm sure you all have used services before, but in case I'm I'm lucky enough that you haven't, then I get to teach you another thing as well. So let's go ahead and and. Uh, inject this service um, that we uh, defined in our startup or uh, that we requested into our home controller. As you can see, home controller comes with already uh, the logger service. So we're just going to add another one right under it in the same fashion. Option, I options and of type. And this is where we just put the name of the service we just created. So my app settings, I'm going to put that in the clipboard. And that's shift alt enter if you want to go full screen like that. And then just call it whatever you want. And I, and I just follow the same kind of uh, way of wording things that the defaults the templates use, which is the underscore. Uh, I think they've done that since back in the day, but if you, do control dot, it will give you some options here and just choose using Microsoft that extensions that options. That's, that is the namespace that that interface lives in and then control dot here. And it's going to pick the namespace, um, that your web application chose. And in case you don't know this, um, the reason why your namespace here is web application one dot services is it's nothing fancy. It's just that it's in the services folder. You don't have to keep it this. You could delete this. You could add to the end of it. It really doesn't matter. It's just a unique name. So control shift S and I'll save all my files. And notice that all the three stars on the top just went away because all three files just got saved. Um, and now let's come back here. And in the same manner that they injected this, we're going to say that this controller in its constructor expects a class that implements I options of my settings and we can just call it um, options. That sounds good enough to me. Now here, let's, let's get our local variable assigned to the class or our private read only to what came in in the constructor. And so now here in the index, we could do something with these variables. So I could set a breakpoint here, or I could uh, put them inside a, a view bag to return to the model, for example. So you just do like view bag dot my bar one equal to, and now you can just grab that options dot value. Always says dot value, okay? And boom, there they are. A, B, C. Do a couple of them. DEF and XYZ. And if you hover over it, you can see that last one's an int. So we know what these are, but we're going to show them in our view now. So let's go over to the view and maybe we'll drop it a line here. 
and put them in a paragraph and use the at sign to get out the view bags one two and three and I'm going to go ahead and launch my application with my control plus shortcut. Oh, build errors. Oh, so we never uh, gave it the namespace. So control dot using the namespace, the error went away. Uh, and um, there is one other thing. Actually, I just realized app settings JSON. You should always double check that you formatted this correctly because I did this earlier and I was missing this comma here. So just make sure that you have proper uh, JSON file here. And sometimes it'll be a little green line if it's not. All right, so we'll go ahead and launch our application. And step through it. Hello world. Hello again, I zoomed in. Oh. We should zoom in some more. And then if you hover on this third one, null, now it's 995, because I had, had to hit F10 over the line, hit F5 to launch the view. Hello world, I zoomed in, 995, pulled right from our config file. All right. Now there are ways to pull them directly into a class, but since we're showing off MVC here, I think that the service was a better way to show it to you. Um, I will post a link to the official documentation in the video if you want to learn how to do just a real basic loading it into a class. It's just about the same amount of code as what I just did, just a little different. And there are some other classes that are similar um, or other interfaces that are similar, uh, but the main difference is just the time that they pull them, the time that the data is pulled from app settings of JSON, whether it's pulled throughout the application or just when the app's loaded, that kind of thing life cycle and that'll all be in the official documentation the same web page i send you it's a really short document i suggest you take a look at it if you're going to go ahead and use this well thank you so much for watching have a good day